Hi, and welcome to the Imaginal Podcast. This is a place that protects and explores what we need to actualize our uniqueness. And like the caterpillar who carries its butterfly blueprint in its imaginal cells all the way to the chrysalis and then melts into liquid before transforms, we too have an inner knowing that can tell us how to make our wings. Hello, welcome back to the podcast. It is Sauce. I hope your week is off to a good start, a great start, actually. And today I have Daniel Watson back as my guest co-host. We have been delving deep into ideas around younger self. Sometimes people might call that the inner child or the fragmented child or the complex. And there are so many different things to talk about and different angles upon which to approach these areas. But today, Daniel and I set out to talk about acknowledging these different parts of ourselves. Because often these parts of ourselves hold such wisdom or such insight or just aspects of ourselves that we might have quieted along the way. Or this part of ourself could be fearful or, or whatever. And Daniel ended up referencing a coaching session that we had had the day before we recorded. And I might say, as a coach, I keep that information confidential. So whatever spoken in a session is confidential, as well as whomever I am coaching is also confidential, unless that person decides to share that. And that is what happened in this episode. I don't know that we both expected it, but I double-checked with Daniel afterward, and he said that he was happy to share that information with you. So Daniel recounts his very personal and really beautifully moving story. And he very generously offered his share. And I likewise found myself in his story. And he knows me well enough to know the similarities. And so our stories intertwined a tiny bit. And I hope that you enjoy this conversation. And maybe you also will find yourself in these places. So here is my conversation with Daniel. Hi, everyone. I'm here again with Daniel. Hello, everyone. Back again. Daniel and I are prone, as you know, to long conversations in life, along with Lexi, his partner. And oftentimes what we like to do is riff on different things or dive deep in, in certain areas. And then it seems to find its way into the podcast. So <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, it's, it's, it's an odyssey with you, Sauce. <laughs> Well, this is hot on our hearts this week. And so today we wanted to talk about acknowledging different parts of ourselves. And Daniel, yeah, I think I might have you start off with this. Okay. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, I mean, so not all of you will know, but I am currently doing some life coaching with, uh, with our beautiful <laughs> podcast host. Um, and yesterday we, we had a session. And basically, I'd, I'd been feeling a bit, a bit morose, a bit melancholy. And um, I think I, I discussed in, in the first podcast that I did with you, Sauce, um, that I, I'd been getting, I get these kind of balls of emotion in my chest. And it's quite often like when it's shame or fear or anger or frustration. Those are the main feelings I get. And I'd been getting this one that I just wasn't really able to shift. Um, and it, 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 yeah, it was very kind of frustrated and very tense. And so I started doing some life coaching with, with source and we kind of made a breakthrough yesterday that, that got me thinking more. Mm. And that was the, you know, the ball of frustration and anger and, you know, sadness or melancholy or, or, or whatever. It comes from my young self who used to feel that all the time when, when he was, he was a child. Um, you know, that kind of bottling up of those emotions was my defense mechanism when I was younger. And so me feeling that it was, you know, we, we worked out after a long and deep discussion 
that it was the the young version of me trying to tell the old version of me something or just you know trying to be acknowledged trying to be um heard and uh yeah i had quite a a deep introspective evening yesterday but it was it was all good things you know it was all really positive and enjoyable oh daniel i wasn't well, I, we didn't really talk exactly about what we were going to say today. And in you just mentioning the life coaching, I I will say, you know, I didn't know if we would mention that, but just in case people haven't been through life coaching before, it's definitely not me telling you how to live your life or telling you what to do. It's, no. It was you. It was your inner knowing. It was your reflection. It was your exploration that was so beautiful. And I feel so honored to have been hmm. able to bear witness to those spaces yesterday together. Yeah, yeah. No, and uh, yeah, I, I will say about the life coaching just very quickly is that your role is to kind of facilitate truths and important truths coming to the surface, mm-hmm. you know, and if you are kind of dictating what those truths are, then they're not true. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so that's, that's essentially what the life coaching is about. And, um, and source the person is what makes her such a special life coach mm-hmm. as well. Oh, I mean, <laughs> so, so sweet. I, I just, I, I, Anyways, I honor you and we'll continue in this conversation, but I just want to say that it's such a privilege. It is such a privilege to coach you. Mm. These have been rich sessions and and very meaningful. And would it be helpful to start off with how that came to the surface, kind of that subject of the ball of emotion? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like I said, I've been feeling one of my um, bleak periods for for a little while. And something that I, I've only recently begun to recognize is it's this kind of ball of emotion that is stuck in my chest that, you know, essentially causes these bleak periods. And because I've spent my whole life kind of ignoring that type of emotion, and bottling it just because that's what I learned to do to survive as a little boy. Mm-hmm. Um, that is a part of me that I've never really investigated um, because I'll just try to ignore it and bottle it up more and then ignore it. Um, but it always leads to like a, an eruption eventually. And I had that. I dropped the dog's food on the floor um, and it went on the carpet and I just I, I absolutely lost it with myself. I called myself all these horrible names. And I realized um, how often I call myself like stupid and an idiot and more creative but um, profane mm-hmm. uh, names as well. Um, and it, it all kind of stems from, from the same place. It's, it's, the the young boy in me who never learned how to deal with emotions like that in a healthy manner and it's a part of me that you know I've ignored for decades but yesterday um I kind of communed with that with that part of me and it, it was really beautiful, actually. It, it, it had me in tears um, mm. because the, the the little the little boy in there was so clear in what he was trying to get across. You know, he was so excited to be acknowledged. Oh, um, he was so so happy that someone was um, asking him what he needed what he wanted in in a safe space and environment and I've been kind of riding a high from that ever since um yeah yeah so that that was a really really big moment for me and kind of sparked a a creative side um that has been kind of deadened a little bit of late oh wow wow that's 
It's gorgeous, Daniel. And I might just say that when you, you know, we're talking about how you didn't have a way of, I, gosh, I don't know your exact words. Uh, what was it that you said about processing those emotions or? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, as a kid, obviously, I, I as we discussed previously, I had a speech impediment. So I just, I wasn't able to express myself. Oh, so, you know, in the adults in my life, when I would start to get these kind of these buildups of emotion, I'd start erupting in tears or anger or frustration. I saw in their faces like a look of panic, you know? Mm -hmm. And so from that, I learned that these eruptions weren't, weren't going to endear me to anyone. And I, I had to find ways to endear myself to people because I couldn't do it verbally. And so I learned then that if I was to be liked or at least not feared, then I'd have to start bottling these things up and making these explosions, if more severe, you know, less regular. Right. I think that's what stood out to us was when you were talking about the dog food and granted it is like frustrating when these things happen for, for all of us, but you were sort of saying that the, there it was coming from a deeper well, this expression of anger or, and then it was being turned on self. And when you yeah. habitually turn on yourself and call yourself names and we can identify that as not being really organically from the, this, the self originally, right? It's somewhere yeah. in this world, it, we get beat up in this world. It can be really tough to live out here in this, <laughs> this place. And, yep. and so it's a predatorial voice oftentimes or almost always, right? From the past that we've somehow conflated as being our own. And also I think for you, it wasn't safe, as you're mentioning, it wasn't safe for you to express any kinds of emotions like these. And so the safest thing for you to do is to get along when you were younger, B bottle it up, get yeah, along. Exactly. And so as this little boy had so many things to contend with and also so much to say, but was unable to say anything that he really wanted to, right? Whether it was circumstantial or the environment or whatever, that voice got so minimized and also, the other thing that was sort of a lantern towards our on our path, like it was a lantern on our path, was that it that kind of eruption isn't your value set. Like you are so kind and generous, you wouldn't be someone who would just erupt over anything. And so, and we knew it wasn't the dog food necessarily. And so, that's what allowed us to go a little bit deeper. Mm. So, yeah, exactly. Go on. No, no, I was, I was just going to say it's, um, it was amazing how, how well I was able to kind of avoid that truth, you know, um, because it, it has been for a very long time. It's not necessarily anymore, but for a lot of my life, it was very uncomfortable to think about that time, mm -hmm. you know? And so obviously I just learned not to learn to avoid it. And so it was, it was a really beautiful experience being able to put some of those puzzle pieces together that have been missing for, well, for, for my whole life, essentially. And as you say, it was the, the lantern on the way was that there was this kind of disparity between how I would treat anyone else in that situation compared to how I would treat myself you know just a chasm um of difference mm -hmm. and so yeah it's uh the self is a patchwork of just a million different things every single person um is so nuanced and delicate and i mean fractured as well you know um mm -hmm. i mean it's it's kind of like a huge vase that gets dropped on the floor and we spend our life trying to piece it together again with glue you know yes. um 
it's it's a big job that very few if any ever get finished but the best we can do is is you know remake it in the best the best way we can i guess i mean some would say that that's where the beauty comes from and i don't know the name for this and i probably should but it's the japanese pottery how they put those pieces back together oh yeah 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 that's exactly right. what it, is it right? you know it's it's put together with yeah I, I know there's a name for it but I, I can't for the life of me think of it yeah oh i'll find it and put it in the show notes but it's something about putting it together back with gold and those yeah places are so you know valuable mm. And it's, I guess, something that's so beautiful and brilliant about the human spirit is that we relate to these places together. And as you have yours, I was, you know, sharing that I also have my fractured parts. Yeah. Oh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and my my own over, I don't mean to characterize this as an overreaction, but when we know that the reaction isn't, isn't really just because of whatever is in the present moment mm. and it's coming from somewhere else. And I have habitual overreactions, I will call them for myself, um, to different things, you know, and yeah. and I can share that another time. But Daniel, where did it take you last night, this beautiful space that you're talking about? Well, so yeah, as I said, I'd, I've been having a little bit of a creative block with this malaise that's set in. And so I actually did a bit of writing, you know, about my young self, you know, just told his story a little and described him a little. Mm. And then after that, I decided that um, I was just going to make some notes on the second installment of the children's book series that that I'd been working on before having this kind of um, this difficulty. and. Uh, so I was, I was writing these notes and I, I wrote um, something like, you know, we need to work out who the protagonist is going to be. And then I read it back and I crossed out the we and put I. And then I thought about it for a moment. And I was like, no, this is, this is a collaborative effort. The young boy has just given me an opportunity to, to be creative again. So he needs to join in. So yeah. Oh. And then I, w without even thinking, without even thinking, just scribbling away, I, I read through my, my notes afterwards and I'd written we like three or four times just afterwards without thinking. Oh, and it was, wow. uh, yeah, wow, right. it, yes. was, it was, it was a really, really cute moment. Oh gosh. And <laughs> it makes me emotional because he he had the freedom of his voice, young Daniel. Yeah, exactly, exactly. No, I I was listening to him and oh. and um telling him his ideas were good as well. Oh, mm. um, and so yeah, like like I say, it was it was a really a really gorgeous, sweet moment. But I mean, I I, I feel as though that you've had um, not identical experiences, but you know, s similar similar experiences with um the topics uh, that we were discussing but from your perspective yesterday totally absolutely mine shows up most vulnerably in singing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i can speak to 2000 people with a microphone but <laughs> i can't sing by myself in my own house actually that's changing that is changing yeah. as we welcome these parts of ourselves very kindly back in and i think that's the piece that we accidentally miss. I would say that we would want to be kind in our remembrance of these things, but we become the predatorial voice because the predatorial mm -hmm. voice from the past or the criticism or the marginalization or the bullying or all of those things mm -hmm. were so deeply ingrained that we just go straight to it or we feel like we don't have room to be compassionate in those spaces. So we just try to get on, get on yeah. with it, you know? And if we, we don't, we don't stop to realize that maybe there's something under there that is quite tender and quite beautiful. And I think that's what I see most often in myself and others. It's when we have resistance or we have 
emotions, and we kind of want to get rid of it. Like we want to, oh, I, I just, why can't I get over this block? Or I just don't want to do it. Or, or people think they're lazy. Or, or we're like, I just shouldn't be angry. I shouldn't be this. I shouldn't be sad. I, I it, because we don't always have enough room for these things in our society. Yeah. But, but really, it's a beautiful composition of self and circumstances that can welcome all of these things. And the, I think one thing that we were talking about yesterday is that this anger might feel displaced, but it has a message. It was, yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I think generally speaking, we can look at all of the emotions we feel, not just anger or sadness or fear and interpret a message behind them that we, we don't often pay attention to, Mm. you know, like if, yesterday I was I was excited to be writing again Mm -hmm. and you know that message tells me that I I have to I have to make sure it's always fun you know like it's it's a it's a creative thing and it needs to be fun if it's a drag I shouldn't do it because I have the potential to really really enjoy the act of writing and creating these stories and these characters and these narratives. But if I'm not having a good time, what I produce isn't going to be good as well, you know? Mm. Um, and the, the kind of, you know, my, my experience before that in the weeks and months preceding last night and the week before really, was this this kind of anger and frustration was that the young boy he needed to be acknowledged in that moment and he knew that he could help me and so he was getting frustrated and angry and annoyed because I wasn't paying him any attention and also probably because I was calling myself and therefore him all manner of horrible names. Mm-hmm. You know, I was telling him to be quiet, like, just go away, go away, frustration and anger. You're not welcome here. And that was just him trying to get my attention. And uh, so, you know, I, I offered him a, an apology yesterday and um oh. He, he was very, very forgiving, you know, and, and I could feel it. And it's, it's kind of bizarre for me to speak like this, as you know, Sauce. I can be a little bit of a cynic. <laughs> uh, but it, uh, like, for me to say that I communed with my inner young boy really directly and I heard responses from him, it's quite a big thing for me to admit that, but it it was so true. It was so real. These parts of us, they're, they're hidden, but only because we refuse to perceive them. Mm. We, you you know, it's, it's a, we shut them away because, you know, we, we don't want to listen to them. And it was amazing how, like I say, how direct the contact was with my um, with my young self. Really, quite a profound experience, actually, to be able to to have that with him when he had that with very, very, very few people in his life. Oh, I will say, Daniel, that that was one of the most beautifully like tender, brave moments that I've ever witnessed with anyone oh, was so awesome. you you I mean it 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 just felt very real, you know it, it was it was the truth that that we were discussing together. The truth, the truth just showed up, and it was so evident. 
Yeah, yeah, no, and it's um, it is funny how how much effort and how much time we as humans can put into hiding true selves from ourselves, you know, and it's you know these selves they quite often come in partnerships, mm. you know, because the the young self brought in the creative self for me and I and I imagine that it's actually very very similar for you with uh, the singing you know absolutely it's um the 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 creativity I guess maybe comes from a bit of that youthful exuberance that we tamper down yes yeah wow I got really excited (laughs) (laughs) yes no, that is so true. There is a hesitancy that came about due to criticism and a, a real quieting of voice for me. But when I go be- to before that, it, the exuberance, the freedom, you know, that this young self holds. Mm-hmm. And when I can trust her also to make her safe enough, to, no- to let her know that it is no longer the scenario it's not to say that there isn't criticism out there and, you know, not to say that I've got this beautifully honed voice yet, but I think when we are able to be friendly with our younger self and then also to listen mm-hmm. and find this integration. And I think what's so important about this, you know, this exploration is that the young self or many different versions of ourselves, as you say. There's so many parts of ourselves. Exactly. Holds such insight and such wisdom. And that's why we do these questions for the interview when we do the quote, you know, your favorite quote, and then also your childhood story, which Daniel, we still have to catch up with you because we started that little tradition (laughs) after. So we will do that another time with you for sure. Yeah. I think the young self, if we can remember moments or things that we treasure that can hold such keys to our sophisticated selves now yeah yeah and you know like we've been kind of or i've been kind of constantly referring to to the young self because that's kind of the most relevant experience for me certainly recently Mm -hmm. but it it doesn't have to be limited to that you know it, it can be as you say you can directly commune i believe with your creative self or with your generous self or with your introverted self and you made a really good point about providing a a safe space for that you know it's um because you know we, we don't all have the same experiences at the same age right you know you were told you you were told to stop singing as a very young girl mm-hmm. um but you know someone might have been 15 or 16 when someone said they had a bad voice mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so whereas you to kind of find that exuberance have to go further back i'm sure that there are lots of people who you know have to go to when they were a teenager right to find that or and that's again just an example i'm just seem to be quite limited to uh the things that we've discussed uh, recently but um yeah no I, I i think that there's that there is so much to kind of investigate and know that we don't really pay attention to or certainly i don't anyway i th- i think the more we can welcome in all parts of ourselves with so much compassion and open-heartedness and curiosity, as well as even in people that we know, you know, approaching. Mm. Well, now we've started about a hundred topics that we don't have time for. So <laughs> so we're, gonna, <laughs> we're about to <laughs> wrap it here. We, 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 I'm so sorry. So, we open. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, Daniel, as we close, what I might ask of you is, do you have a word of insight or just your own experience of the best way to care for your young self well you know for me it was it was listening to him it was offering him a safe space and giving him permission to speak his truth 
what what he really had on his mind, what he really wanted and needed. And I think that for everyone, it's going to be different. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. You you have to you have to find that thing that your your young self needs that gap that wasn't filled that um necessity that wasn't provided and just be patient you know they, they they're a child at the end of the day um they might not be the most eloquent to begin with but if you listen hard enough they'll they'll tell you no that's so beautifully said i think just the space of kindness and compassion listening like you said mm-hmm. is so vital it's all the things that maybe the child didn't get and if that feels too far away like this idea of how do i talk to my younger self if that feels really weird or strange i think one way to explain it would be that when we're younger we go through different pains or different difficulties and we find a way as a child we find strategies or we find ways to survive to make it through and so Daniel was sharing his story. And if you haven't heard his original interview, it's episode four, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's such a beautiful episode to go back to. And and for me too, was singing wasn't safe. And, and there's so many other things too that we have in our different stories, mm-hmm. both of us, as well as everyone, right? A collection of maybe familial hardships or out there in the world, whatever it was that was painful, we found a way. So what ends up happening is as you come to adulthood, some of those strategies sort of stay with you unconsciously and you don't realize it. Mm-hmm. And so when something isn't matching up or or when something is causing you to feel a certain way and you can't quite sort it out, that's a great place to sort of look back and see where the origin might be from. And then instead of conflating with the predatorial voice or or conspiring with the predatorial voice and reinforcing those, which we do if you, you know, we listen to our inner talk. Oh, anytime the inner talk is starting to be really, really critical, that probably came from somewhere else. And so this relationship with these parts of ourselves that are trying to say something, trying to protect something beautiful, trying to um, prevent you from going down that same dangerous road again, which might not be as dangerous anymore. These kinds of things are little clues. And I know that's a, the entrances to many rabbit holes, but for now, we might just close it here. But Daniel, I just want to thank you for coming on today. And also just thank you for yesterday. That was such a beautiful conversation. And hearing your reflections the day after, after you've processed some, is and hearing your creativity opening up, it's just It really touches my heart so deeply and inspires me too. So thank you. Yeah, no, thank you, Sauce, for for yesterday and then for inviting me on here and giving me the opportunity to talk about it. Always, always love when you come on. And thank everyone. Thank you all for being with us today. If you have someone who you think might benefit from this episode, please send it along to them. And we would really love it if you would also rate or review the podcast. And find me on Instagram at Lori Sase, L-O-R-I-S-A-S-E, or my website, lorisase.com. And we hope you have a beautiful week. Yeah, thank you for listening, everyone. Uh, Listening to my rambles again. We appreciate it. (laughs) Yeah, thanks so much, everyone. Bye. Bye.